So you're relocating and while well, you're considering making the Myrtle Beach area home. Well today I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 real reasons why you may not want to move here to the Myrtle Beach area. And well, we're going to be getting after it right now. Hey YouTube family, I'm Jeff Bueller with Living in Myrtle Beach. If this is your first time on this channel and you want to learn everything there is to know about living, working, playing, and well, simply living that beach lifestyle, well then you've come to the right place. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, tap the little bell, this way you're notified on all things Living Myrtle Beach. Now first, I do want to thank all the amazing people that we've been able to help with their move. That's right, I'm talking to you and you and you and well you. If you too are considering moving in and around the Myrtle Beach area, go ahead, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule that Zoom call using the link in the description below. Either way, we'll help you make that smooth move. Okay, let's get after it. Today, we are talking about the top 10 real reasons why you do not want to move here to the Myrtle Beach area. Now, I've gotta tell you, I always like to say I'm Northern born and raised, but Southerner at heart. I've lived in the Myrtle Beach area for the better part of 25 years now. From the North Strand to the South Strand to downtown and west of the waterway, and well, my family and I, we absolutely love it. However, there are some things about the Myrtle Beach area uh, that, well, I don't particularly like. So let's get into them right now. Okay, so number 10. Well, the lack of cultural history and arts. You know, those are certainly three terms that generally aren't associated with the Myrtle Beach area. If you're looking to move to an area where you can be engulfed on a daily basis of you know rich culture and history and the arts uh, something that Myrtle Beach certainly does not have to offer unlike some of our neighboring cities in Charleston South Carolina or Wilmington North Carolina each within only a two-hour drive that are deeply rooted within their history and their culture and have an, an art scene but again, these are things that you're just not really going to find here in the Myrtle Beach area. Though I've got to say, for my family and I, again, either of those cities within a two hour drive, it's an easy staycation, weekend getaway. And I find that when we do visit those areas, we seem to appreciate uh, all that it has to offer, maybe a little bit more than if we actually live there. But again, if that's something that you want to be immersed in on a daily basis, well then, Myrtle Beach is not for you. Okay, now number nine, we've got the construction boom. Listen, as I mentioned, I've lived in this area for the better part of 25 years. As a young college guy to now a responsible adult married with children. And you know, there was a time when the Myrtle Beach area, you know, really was kind of a sleepy beach town. We were very seasonal. So obviously it was booming in the summertime, but once we got to you know late fall and into the winter, it was an absolute ghost town. Fast forward to today though, with the amount of people that are moving here and the uh, number of events that happen year round to draw people into this area, we have seen a massive construction boom. Everywhere you go, every neighborhood that you drive through, it is like a construction war zone. There's no question about it. So if you're looking for an area that's still maybe kind of under the radar and still a little low key, then Myrtle Beach just may not be for you. Okay, coming in at number eight. Well, this is one that I get asked all the time. Jeff, what about hurricanes? And look, there's no question that the Carolinas are no stranger to hurricanes and tropical storms. And again, living here for the past 25 years, you know, I've seen two sides of it. As a young college student, when we heard hurricane, that meant one thing, and that was hurricane party. 
Now, as an adult, married with two children, I take a bit more of a pragmatic approach to it. But here's what really gets me the most about hurricanes is the lead time. We know way too far in advance, weeks, almost a month in advance, that a hurricane might be coming to the coast. And the problem with that is, is we spend night and day on the weather channel, on our local news channel, tracking what is the direction of the storm? What is the intensity of, of the storm? Is it gonna hit us? Is it gonna be a category one, two, three, four, five? Is it gonna be a tropical storm? And it just seems to get downgraded, upgraded. It moves left, it moves right, it spins in circles. So that can be very aggravating and frustrating. So what I've learned over the years is when we know that we have a hurricane coming, certainly you want to prepare and be ready for it. But I do know this, whether it makes landfall or it doesn't make landfall, whether it's a tropical storm or a cat five, I have zero control over what it's gonna do or what's gonna happen. So as we lead up until usually about five to three days before the hurricane and we have a better understanding is it going to make landfall? What do we need to do to get prepared? Typically, I'm saying, hey guys, we know that school's gonna be closed. We know that offices are gonna be closed. Half of the town's gonna be shut down. Let's go ahead, pack a bag, and just get out of town. And we'll head more inland, uh, or we'll head a little further you know, southwest, maybe to Atlanta or into the upstate, and just simply get away from it have kind of a staycation, visit with family that we haven't seen in a while, and as it passes by, well, then we can go ahead and come back home. And again, regardless of what happens, I would have no control, but at least I know that my family is clearly out of harm's way, and we'll just have to deal with any of the aftermath of the storm afterwards. But if that just sounds a little too stressful for you, and you're a little concerned about you know hurricanes and storms well then Myrtle Beach just may not be for you okay coming in at number seven ooh, allergens listen we've got some funky stuff here from pollen to ragweed and all kinds of weird things floating around from the the uh, foliage here in this area and there's no question early spring to late spring, really about this time leading up to summer, man, it can just kick your butt. And you may feel like you're down and out and can't breathe and popping Zyrtec as much as you can. You know, my biggest thing with the pollen is, we call it yellow snow here. We'll find my car will be covered in yellow. I'll go wash it, six hours later, it's all back again. So you wanna keep in mind in that early spring, late spring, really when the weather is great, do not have your windows down in the car, do not have your windows up at home because it will just get everywhere. So allergies can be pretty rampant here with the pollen and with the ragweed. So if you're already pretty sensitive to those types of things, well then Myrtle Beach just may not be for you. Okay, now we've got number six and that is the bugs and mosquitoes here in the Myrtle Beach area. Again, especially once we start spring and into summer, especially after a rainfall, someone like myself, I guess I have that sweet blood. Man, those mosquitoes can just tear me up. The bugs here, we've got some of the strangest bugs. Now, some of them are completely harmless, but you'll definitely see them and run into them. But my biggest thing is definitely the mosquitoes. We like to enjoy our time, you know, outside here at home or outdoors, you know, around the beach. And, you know, there's plenty of parks with woods and, but of course with all the marshes and the low, you know, we are the low country. So some of those low areas that can sometimes seem to, to be the wetland areas, we tend to have quite a bit of mosquitoes that really can just drive you nuts. So if you're someone who just absolutely hate bugs, you wanna be somewhere where you don't have to worry about getting bit by mosquitoes or strange critters kind of crawling around, well then, you know, Myrtle Beach may not be for you. 
Okay, number five. Mm. This used to be a really big one for me, and I guess just living here so long, you know, I've kind of gotten used to it, but that is the lack of professional sports teams here in the Myrtle Beach area. Not even just the Myrtle Beach area, South Carolina itself. For South Carolina, we have no professional teams. When we're talking about football, baseball, even soccer and hockey, of course we do have the club teams and the minor league teams, you know, in both baseball and soccer and hockey. But in the Myrtle Beach area, the only sporting event that you're going to find is either going to be the Myrtle Beach Pelicans, which is a Chicago Cubs uh, club team, and of course the college teams. Now we have Coastal Carolina University, a Division I Sun Belt uh, Conference college that has really uh, exploded in their sports as far as their record between basketball, baseball, being the world champions, college world champions, and baseball, and of course their football program. We see them more and more in the public eye and on TV. Uh, so we do have that, right? But if you want to live in an area where you have a solid, strong fan base for one team, you know, you're just really not gonna find that here. You know, from a football standpoint, we have the Carolina Panthers. But of course, they're actually located in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is about four hours away. And most local people, they tend to draw to that being their team or maybe kind of their, their second team, right? Their home away from home kind of team. Um, you know, but again, being able to just, you know, hop on a train or a short drive to go see a football game, not happening. It's four hours away. Most of their games, you know, are, are on the Sunday afternoon, and it's just a lot to go through, you know, to, to watch a football game uh, live. So if, you know, having professional sports, having access to that kind of on a, on a daily basis or, you know, during the season that they're playing, it's not something that you're gonna find here. Now, again, college sports, that's really where most of the people gravitate to. And trust me, do not ever get interfere or get in the middle of a Clemson, South Carolina rival. It will never go good. Trust me on that one for sure. You know, I think you're gonna find that if anything, your neighbor is more likely going to be a rival of your team because we're just scattered all over the place. Now, if we do use kind of the litmus test, so to speak, of sports bars, I'm gonna say probably the number one NFL fan base team based on sports bars is probably gonna be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, that's right. So if you're a Yinzer coming to the Myrtle Beach area, you know, you're certainly gonna have more of those terrible towel, uh, you know, folks, you know, surrounding you. But we, again, are all over the place for that. So if having professional sports is important to you where you live, well, forget Myrtle Beach and the Carolinas altogether. Okay, here we have it. We are at number four of the top 10 real reasons why you may not want to move here to the Myrtle Beach area. And I think this one is gonna come to a big surprise for a lot of people. I'm probably gonna get a little bit of grief here in the comments. Let me know what you think on this, but here we go. The cuisine, the food here. You know, there's no question that you know, we have some great cuisine, local cuisine, when we talk about, you know, low country boils and shrimp and the seafood here, right, is some of the best, especially the local shrimp. There are some places, forget about it, straight off the boat, it is the sweetest, tastiest shrimp you'll ever have. We love making that low country boil. But other than that, if you're looking for an area that's really diverse in its cuisine, you know, when we talk about, say, you know, Chinese restaurants, I used to love, you know, Chinese takeout, you know, when I go back home to visit family. And well, it's just not something that we really have here. Uh, Italian, we've got a couple very good Italian restaurants. And when we talk about pizza, you know, New York style pizza, hey, listen, there are two or three pizza joints that are definitely on my radar. I, you know, I'm a regular to them, I support them and they do a fantastic job, but 
in comparison to kind of the real deal if you're from Jersey, if you're from New York, you know, it's just not really gonna compare. I've got a lot of friends from that part of the area, you know, from Jersey, from New York, and it's amazing how much food that they'll often have, you know, shipped down here. Uh, if you're familiar with, you know, pork roll, Taylor ham, right? That's something we haven't had in forever, but we do find that in some of the grocery stores. There's one or two local Italian markets, so you can find it. But again, it's, it's not everywhere. Right, so our cuisine, again, don't get me wrong, we have some great restaurants here. We also have a lot of the, you know, the chain restaurants that you're gonna find everywhere throughout the country, right? Um, and of course, being in a resort town, you know, we have those tourist trap type restaurants and they can be fun to. Pro tip, do not try and go there in the summertime. Even if you have family visiting, forget about it. Wait until the winter time, you know, when things do slow down a little bit. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself in two hour waits. You know, there's one restaurant my family and I, we tend to go to every November. That's my birthday, by the way. And so there's a, uh, a Calabash seafood buffet where you can get the uh, crab calls and all that. But we always wait until November because there's hardly anybody there. It's certainly not as busy as you would find it in the summertime. So again, you know, from a, a diversity standpoint of you know a lot of different ethnic type restaurants, just not going to find that here. So if you're looking to, if you're a foodie, which we kind of, you know, our family, we feel like we're, we're foodies and we love traveling to other cities and other areas. And one of the things that's always on our radar is, you know, where's the best places to go to eat? And we do have some of those, but again, I just don't feel that the Myrtle Beach area, though it's kind of up and coming from that standpoint, we're still also lagging a little bit behind. So another reason why Myrtle Beach may not be for you. Okay, we're getting closer. We are now at the number three reason of why you may not want to move here to the Myrtle Beach area. And that is going to be, I'm gonna give this two parts. Part A are the crowds. Part B is the traffic. And there's no question that they go hand in hand. As I mentioned earlier, the days of us being a, a seasonal town where we have a the high season and an off season really is just no longer. We are a year round destination for both people living here, moving here. Consider the population of Horry County right now sits at just over 400,000 residents and that's growing by 10,000 residents each year and just climbing. Right? So there's no question from a local standpoint, we're getting bigger and bigger. We're growing and growing. From a tourism standpoint, for all the welcome tourists that we have here in the Myrtle Beach area, this is gonna blow your mind, it blew my mind, but we experience 20 million, million dollars, <laughs> million people uh, throughout the year in tourism. To me, that's just absolutely bonkers. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of crowds. That's a lot of traffic. Now, fortunately, with the you know with the construction boom and with all these people visiting and moving here, the infrastructure is growing with it. It's a little. It's always a little bit slow behind South Carolina, especially our area. We always seem to kind of lag behind in some of that stuff. Definitely a pet peeve of mine as well. But we are building more and more infrastructure to help alleviate some of those uh, pain points when we talk about traffic and crowds. But if you already live in an area where, you know, it's, it's crowded and the traffic is just driving you nuts and you wanna get away to a more quiet, more relaxed pace, you know, Myrtle Beach just may not be for you. Okay, here we are at the number two reason why you may not want to move to the Myrtle Beach area, and that's going to be the seasons. If you're the type of person who really enjoys all four seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall, I'm kind of hearing that song rolling through my head right now. 
but if you enjoy all four seasons, uh, then Myrtle Beach may not be for you. If you like in the fall time, the changing of leaves and the, all the vibrant colors that you can find, look, we do get that, but it is short, quick, and gone. If you're the type of person in the wintertime that actually likes to layer up and bundle up and put on the parka and you enjoy the snow and playing in the snow and all that that has to offer, well, Myrtle Beach is not going to be for you. Does it get cold here? Yes, fortunately, it comes and goes. Usually it's just kind of wet and dreary and a little bit miserable, but it's a short uh, period of time. Actually, I'd say this winter was probably one of the most mild winters that we ever had. And I will admit, there are times I own a couple jackets, you know, that I like to wear. I like to wear a couple, you know, some flannel shirts and layer up, but most of the time those clothes just kind of sit in the closet. I might get to wear them three, four times, you know, out here in the winter time, and that's about it. If you're the type of person, spring. Now, obviously we have some wonderful, uh, great springs here, but it, our spring can be all over the place. One day it can be 80 degrees, the next day it can literally be 50 degrees. It's just bonkers. The only consistent season that we really have here, which brings me to my number one reason why you do not want to move here to the Myrtle Beach area, is going to be the heat and humidity. When I say hot, it gets blistering, scorching, melt your face off, drippy, sweaty, hot here in the Myrtle Beach area. Now, for my wife, who grew up in South Carolina, for her, 75 degrees is cold. So when it's 95, 100 degrees out, she loves it. Me, I'll tell you, I have very personal relationships with shade, with the air conditioning, whatever I can do to stay cool. I enjoy the heat, we love getting out when we can stay cool and we're in the pool or in the ocean, but if you're the type of person who just does not want to be pizza oven door, stick your face, melt your face off hot, trust me, Myrtle Beach is not for you. So listen, until we see each other next time, if you enjoyed this video, again, hit subscribe, tap the bell, that way you're notified all things Myrtle Beach. And until next time, we'll see you around.